Yo, yo. All right. Ready to go. I'm just waiting on Ina. Okay. Cool. Ready here. Um, oh, this is being recorded too. <laughs> I just forgot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's Ina. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let these people in. So we're recording? Yeah, yep. we're recording. Okay, nice. Welcome. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you guys are tuning in from. Welcome back. Happy to see you guys here today. And uh, we, got, we got some cool lessons for you guys coming up. And, and today is about expireds. So um, we will give it just a moment here, let a couple more people trickle in. And uh, before we jump in, so um, if you guys have any specific feedback or questions on, on expired stuff during this presentation, there is the uh, chat section that's open. You guys can raise a hand. So we'll have a little discussion here at the end. Um, you know, th this concept of talking to expireds is not going to be anything new to you guys. It shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> but um, what we will be going is a couple of different and new strategies to try to win over some more of this expired business. Because, you know, with video, we have the opportunity to set ourselves apart from 95% of the competition that's out there. And so when these expireds have gotten phone calls from other agents, there's a high likelihood they will have not gotten a nice video from other agents. And so that's going to be part of this strategy of uh, going after expireds um, was going to include video. So, um, okay, right, we are we are one minute after here. Sorry if there's some trickling in later, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, guys. You know, I wanted to actually start, for those of you who didn't know, I actually am a licensed real estate agent as well. I got, I got my license prior to starting Dub and was like, okay, I want to sell stuff. Let's go, let's go sell. And um, so I got my real estate license and expireds was actually, uh, expireds and for sale by owners were sort of intimidating for me at first because I was a brand new agent, right? I was like, well, man, if this other agent failed or if these guys are trying to do it on their own, who am I to come in there and, and you know, tell them we can sell it? But um, if that, that's that like imposter syndrome thing where like you got to fake it until you make it, right? So even if you're a brand new agent, you have to get your scripts down, get your knowledge understood so that you can appear like you know what you're doing. You can at least sound like you know what you're going to say because with expireds, we will talk about FISBOs in another one, but these people need to know that you're going to do something different. Like, why are they going to list with you? They just listed with an agent. It didn't go well or it didn't work. So why you? So that's what we're going to talk about in today's presentation. Some scripts, some methodologies and strategies for reaching out to expireds. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, Ina, thank you. And uh, pull up that. There we go. All right, go, go ahead and go to the first one for me. So we're talking about expired listings today, guys, how to go after them. So first, we always start with the why. Well, sometimes we start with a story. Sometimes we start with the why. Today's the why. So why expireds? These are some of the lowest hanging fruit on the market. These people have already tried to sell their home. They were unsuccessful in it, meaning they still need to sell it. It's not going to be six months or a year, right? They're trying to sell now. They just tried to sell. So that's the main reason. This is an unfulfilled intent to sell. This is the bottom of the funnel when it comes to, you know, lowest hanging fruit, lots of metaphors or euphemisms there, but these, these are the people that are most ripe to uh, have that they're interested in selling. So second thing is they had a mistake. They had something, a slip or something wrong with their existing agent or their FISBO or whatever, however it went expired, something went wrong. And this is your opportunity to patch that up to create a better impression. Um, the high conversion rate from messaging, this is when compared to like dialing a phone book or you're calling people, right, cold calling people, has a much higher conversion rate again because their intention is already there. They already wanted to sell. They tried to sell. They need to sell. And so the conversion rate is going to be much higher. Like if you cold called a thousand random people and you cold called a thousand expireds, one of those is going to have a much higher conversion rate in terms of appointments and interest, and it's going to be the expireds. So all the reason in the world to start with the low hanging fruit. Now there's going to be a limit here, right? Every day, there's only so many new expireds that hit the market. So it's not like your regular cold call phone book list where you can just call people all day long. So this is why the expireds, and again, we're talking about FISBOs as well. These are a much smaller number of people 
and the intention is much higher and the conversion rates much higher. So this is where you guys will want to spend your activity. If you're, you know, doing prospecting, you're doing business development that day. And then after this, then you have your sphere and then you have people who don't know, you, you know, so this is what, why we're going after expireds as well as FISBO. And that'll be a second part of the lesson, but your time is better off spent with people that are more likely to convert. You know, 70% of your business is going to come from your sphere. At least that's where, that's what all the stats say, right? 70 plus percent of your business is going to come from your sphere. So how do we add to the sphere? People with high intentions, people like expires, people like FISBOs. So, okay, that's enough for the why. Let's, let's jump into the next one. Rob, yep. tell us, how do, how, how, what does this strategy consist of? What, what, you know. Well, like, you know, anything in sales, you know, especially today, the touch points have just gone through the roof in terms of, you know, how much you need to reach out. Um, you know, a lot of the times, you know, we're so busy with our devices, you know, you might have four or five touch points. Maybe they haven't even seen those yet. So you'd really need to up your touch, po touch points and you need to do the whole omni-channel approach that we always talk about. So in particular with real estate, kind of the different areas that Darius just mentions in terms of acquiring these leads, you've got to lean into the different areas to acquire them, but you've got to lean into what works best. So for us, and it's something we always evangelize and the people that have used dub and video in general can, can see the value of it is that when you record these videos and you send them out with a personal message, like we talk about, you personalize it with that? and you send it out, whether it's, Good, you know, so far. Email, yeah, yeah, we're getting, whether it's not a couple of weekends away, um, it may last even with the, year. um, I've got somebody on there, yeah. even with, um, you know, mailers, when you have a nice QR code, you know, and someone can see that video and you're doing that, you're acquiring, you're doing that outbound strategy. So we say, whenever you can, obviously record that personal video, but at the end of the day, you've also got to do the calling because you got to pick up the phone. So if you're hitting all these different channels and you're pulling leads from all these different areas that you know of, and every one of those areas, you're doing omni-channel, 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 you really increase your your, increase your, uh, your chances of not only in contact, but you know actually having a solid conversation that could lead to something else. And that's what we're going to break down for you. This it overall looks very simple, right? Get leads, record messages, send messages to leads. We're going to break down each one of these steps for you guys though, because the first one, Acquiring leads. If you aren't aware already of where to get FISBOs, um, this is definitely something you guys should know and be more familiar with. Um, Ina, go ahead and come to the next slide for me. So this first piece, guys, of where are we going to get your FISBOs or where, sorry, your expired FISBOs are next week. Where are we going to get these expired? You guys have a couple of options. The first thing I have listed there is getting from third party sources like Red X. Red X is probably the most popular in terms of expired and FISBOs and stuff. There's several other services out there. Um, we didn't do a full vetting of which service is the best. Maybe that's another one down the road here. But the reason I have third-party services first is because it's sort of like with Dub. You know, you can use a, a cell phone and then a YouTube video and then a website builder, and you can try to put all this stuff together on your own. And it's going to take a lot longer and maybe not be as effective. Um, and that's sort of the same thing when it comes to acquiring expired leads is you can access public records. You can access your MLS. You can see which ones have gone expired, but then you're going to have to try to extract their information as well, the contact information of that person. And so, you know, you can use titles. Sometimes they can uh, help confirm some information for you, but there's going to be a, a low lack of accuracy or lack of accuracy on these public records and on this publicly accessible information. This is just from working with other agents and they've gone through this process. So, you can do this yourself for free, sort of like, well, you're paying for MLS anyway. So, but on MLS and in through public records, you can look up expireds. But then again, you need to cross reference this to try to find the contact information. So, the reason I have, again, third party lead sources listed first here, like Red X, other sources for expireds and FISBOs later, I'm going to recommend them first because, yes, you have to pay for it, but it does come with contact information. It does come daily delivered to your doorstep. So like this is a sort of a screenshot from your list of, of information there. These are the new expireds. And so this is going to be a situation every day you can log into. And remember how we talked about, um, I personally have mentioned in these trainings, how important it is to have your content calendar, to have your task list, to have a plan. And so if you have a service like this and part of your plan is, okay, one hour every day, one and a half hour, I wake up, I get look at my expireds, and I hit all these expireds with a personal message. 
So that's what's going to be part of this workflow. And the first part of it, though, is where your leads are coming from. So if you're on a really tight budget, you're like, look, I literally can't pay for anything else. You can use the MLS. You can use public records to find expired listings. It's a little bit harder to source the contact information through that method, but you can do this for free. Well, technically free. If you're an agent, again, you're, you belong to MLS, you're already paying for it. So, um, Or we're going to be using Red X or other third-party services. There's a dozen services out there that provide this information. So that might take a little bit deeper diving into what your preferred service, excuse me, what your preferred service or lead source is. So any questions on this first part, guys? I know someone was like, do we, should we show them where to, how to use public records to do this or MLS? And I was like, well, everyone's MLS is different, you know, depending on where they're at, everyone has different access to different things. So I, I, would, I thought, thought it'd be hard to show that part actually. But are there any questions guys here on this, where to get your expired leads, where to get their contact info? Is that, is that pretty clear for everybody or does everyone already have a source for that? Anything? All right. So guys, expireds, this is your low hanging fruit. Expireds, FISBOs, they already want to buy or sell. They're, all, you know, they're already in action. So it's much better than dialing cold calls. Um, all right, go ahead and let's come to the next slide. So now we've gotten, we got your list of leads, right? Whether this is uh, from Red X or uh, you did some manual scraping yourself. Now we are ready to message these people. So the first thing I have here is to record a video because as again, guys, video is used, underutilized. It's less than 5% of agents that are using video on a regular basis. So imagine this person's expired hits today. They're going to get called, right? They're going to get messaged. Other agents are going to be contacting this person. Just like when they go to an open house, just like when they're searching for properties, they're going to run into other real estate agents. And just like our duty is in those other places, it's our job to separate ourselves from the competition. Why are they going to want to work with us versus the agent that just failed to sell their home or why, why they want to work with us, period. So this is, again, your opportunity to separate yourself from the 95% of the competition that's out there. And video is going to do that. So again, less than 5% are doing it. So while they're going to be getting inundated with phone calls and text messages, maybe emails, they're not going to be getting a lot of videos. So what I actually have here, guys, is a video script. It's sort of like similar to what a voicemail script would be because it's not a real-time conversation. On, I do have another piece that I'm going to mention. Rob's going to take care of that for me when we're going to talk about calling because um, we did just mention on the previous slide, multi-channel, omni-channel is what we're going to recommend. So you didn't just call and get the voicemail and then give up, right? We called, we texted, we emailed, we sent a direct mail, and maybe even left a door hanger or door knocked, things like that. Door knocking and door hangers are, are the, sort of the most time consuming when it comes to these, um, but it is another channel. So again, I just want to talk about the script a little bit because it is specific, right? It's more like a voicemail. So they said, hey, I'm John with X Realty. I'm calling about the home you were trying to sell. I wanted to reach out about something went wrong with your listing. Now you can notice this language is uh, ambiguous. It didn't say, oh, your price, it was too, the price was too good or the, this was that or was your location. You know, you didn't tell them what it was. You said, hey, I wanted to reach out because I saw something went wrong with your listing. And I've actually helped sellers in your neighborhood after bringing their houses back on the market using my special program. It doesn't have to be three-step program. It doesn't have to be whatever, but it is going to be something you, unique that you're offering. And we're already going to be setting ourselves apart with this impression via video. So this is the script, something just like this. Again, you guys can take this. We'll, we can share the slide. You have the recording, some amalgamation of this. But the idea is it's ambiguous enough where you're not telling them, here's why your property didn't sell. Talk to me now. Because frankly, you don't know. There's, we don't know. We haven't had the conversation yet. And another is you have a unique program. You have some scarcity. You have some fear of missing out in this message because, hey, I've actually helped people do this exact thing. And now, is this a fib if you haven't done this before? Maybe. But has someone on your team or brokerage done this before? Yes. All right. Well, there you go. We can, we can, we can say that safely. So this is the script that's going to work well for video, right? Voicemail and video are similar in that it's not a real-time conversation. We're not getting feedback two ways. 
So feel free to take this script, guys, make it your own. Um, there will be different scripts for calling versus video and email. So we're, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But I'm going to recommend, depending on, like, if this is your first day getting into your uh, expireds, guys, and the list is like 100 long, maybe too much for you to, to bite off in one, one sitting, right? But if you actually get in front of this, like, meaning it's a daily activity that you're caught up on, there's only so many expireds that hit the market every day. So you can very easily do a custom video just like this, where we're going to show the Hey John piece. Many of you guys have seen this, but I'll show it again, just in case. So we're either going to say, you know, Hey John, John's the homeowner and it's expired. We're either going to do a piece like this, or we're going to share our screen and actually pull up that expired screen or video expired listing on our screen and have our little bubble there and say, Hey, I saw your listing expired. And I actually wanted to reach out because I saw something went wrong with your listing. And in fact, I have been very successful at bringing people's houses back on the market after unsuccessfully selling using my unique program. I'd love to discuss this with you in just a short call. Use the button below to give me a call. Anyway, again, that's, that's the idea there, but it needs to be personalized as much as possible because this is a fierce competition situation. They're going to be inundated in this day that they first hit. And so you need to make sure that you're separating yourself from anything else that they've seen. So it's either the name like that, or it's the listing in the screen, and it's personalized to them. And using the technology in Dub, guys, using that playlist, the preset function, that whole video takes you 15 seconds. Hey, John, I was checking out your listing, and I saw that a couple things went wrong. I'd love to discuss those with you. Or again, you're on the screen, same thing. 15 seconds per expired maybe 20, 30 seconds tops. If you actually have something else you want to add, Hey, I grew up on that street. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to get, you know, I know the neighbors, whatever, add some human flavor to it. But again, 15 seconds a piece, it's very doable. Even if you get 50 expireds that day, it's still, you could knock that out easily in an hour, you know, personalized videos for each of them. So this is the script. This is the use case, the personalized video. We're going to now talk about some calling and then there's going to be some more distribution methods because again, it takes multiple touch points for people for their light bulb to happen. And we got to get them on every touch point, every channel, because we don't know where they're most active, right? They might not be active in their text messages or they might not check their emails a lot. So we're going to talk about different channels. Um, any questions guys on, on this script or on the custom video piece? Does this make sense? It should be very, very doable using the preset, using the stuff there. Again, 15, 20 seconds a pop. And it's going to set yourself apart from what's out there. So, okay. Next one, you know. All right, Rob, let's talk about the script. And then, by the way, guys, point your little camera to that QR code. This is going to be the calling scripts. Now, if you already have some good scripts for, for calling uh, expired, fantastic. Stick with those. If you don't, Market Leaders got some really good ones. And again, this is different than the script that I just shared. That was like the voicemail video script. These scripts are gonna be for when you're actually in the conversation with them. And I do recommend doing all of those things, right? You're going to call them, you're going to text them, you're going to email them, maybe some physical mailers as well. So check out these scripts. And then Rob, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the phone conversations. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the times with, with cold calling in general, I mean, we've all been there, we've all done it our whole lives. And, and this in particular, you're kind of reigniting the fire that was kind of once there, you know, it's like, almost like when you contact an account where someone was once interested in some way and they took an action and now you're kind of reinvigorating what that initial, you know, urge was when they were trying to do this stuff. So I think, you know, just some basic overviews when you do do this stuff, you know, we live in a time now where you've got to get right to the point. Now more than ever, you know, before, you know, cold calling, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to talk about the weather, you talk about whatever, that's all gone. <laughs> so you want to be able to get on there and you want to immediately get right into why you are calling. Same thing with videos, value facing, but what are the specific reasons? So the site that Darius is talking about here, when you go here, um, there are just different scripts for different scenarios. But the one thing we always say is you got to make it your own. You know, it's, it's even like when we talk about AI, you know, you can have a wonderful script. And even if you have to stick, if you ever stuck word for word with a script, like maybe you had, a, you had a team you're on and everyone's using the same script, you know, you can always make it your own in terms of inflection, personality, all that good stuff. But in this case, when, you, when you're doing this, lean into what the text says and then kind of twist a little bit and make it your own. 
Um, but these basically here, I'm going to share my screen just for a second and I'll show you the, uh, what we got here. So when you click on that QR code, you're going to bring up this article and it breaks it down into the top kind of five scripts you want to use. So the first one you can see here is for when they plan to relist with the same agent, right? Maybe they're like, you know what? I had that original thought in my mind. I want to go, go back to that same well. So it talks about that here. It gives you a little scenario of the back and forth. But again, you want to make this your own in terms of, you know, how you would handle this, but the, the bare bones are there. The second would be for when they plan to rent instead, you know, which is a big difference between if they're going to do something else and they want to rent the place out. It's got some scenario conversations with that. Number three, when they plan to work on the house before relisting it, you know, that's obviously going to be a little bit longer of a process, depending obviously on what they want to improve, what they want to do. So this, um, again, is the structure but it might be a little different, obviously, depending on what they tell you. Number four, for when they're stuck on the price promised by their previous agent, that number stuck in their head. I remember exactly what that was. It's the only thing I want. But, you know, um, that's something that I think uh, when you really lean into the time period, what the market was, and, and you guys know this better than anybody, you know how much the market moves, you're on top of it. So there are ways to address that as well. And then number five, for when they want to make a positive impression over voicemail, when you want to make a positive impression over voicemail. A lot of the times when you when you do cold calling and you plan on speaking with someone, you're kind of hoping they pick up the phone because you want to get right into it. So when you leave that voicemail, I, I've always found useful just in general in sales where you kind of you know, pretend because you are talking to that person. You just got to pretend that you're talking right to that person right then. So get right into the value. You can do a little bit of the kind of the hinting of what you want to talk about, but I always think it's nice to drop at least a nugget or two of you know your insight to have them try to call you back. So those are kind of the basic outlines. But again, each one of you have such different personalities and different skill sets and your authorities on your areas and what you know. So I would say lean into that uh, as much as you can. And exactly. Thank you, Rob. And the other part portion of this, guys, is it will require a little bit of practice because if you get on the phone and they actually answer and they say, yeah, we're going to relist with the agent. And you're like, oh, wait, what was my counter to that? What was my objection? <laughs> so I do recommend some practice here, guys. We always say practice makes perfect. There is, you know, there's probably more than those five scenarios that might happen. Those will probably be the most common five, but, you know, ha having objection handlers memorized for those five will put you ahead of the game. You'll be very prepared. So, and then every once in a while you'll get a curveball, and you're like, wait, how do I answer that one? I don't know yet. I'll come up with something. So, and then the more that you practice this, you'll get better at thinking on your toes and things like that. So calling guys, uh, and then someone asked where the scripts are. I put the link in there. So if you want to just click to the, the link as well. Okay. So we had a little separate slide for calling because it's different from other activities. It's different from video related activities in that you need to have your stuff memorized, right? Like your objections, you need to understand those different scenarios. Whereas with video, you can practice it a hundred times before you press record. So quite different. That's why it's got its own slide. Next one. Okay, so this is also a little bit different because direct mail and door knockers uh, require a, a different sort of piece for delivery, right? Where email and text message and stuff are instant, social media instant. So direct mail and door knocker, uh, yeah, door knocker, door hangers, or door knocking. Um, if you're going to do door knocking, I highly recommend having a hanger. Get, get a hanger, put your QR code on your door hanger because they didn't answer the door, boom, you just wasted your time and then you drove all the way out there, things like that. Have the door hanger, all of a sudden it's not the waste of time. And I don't recommend you need both. You know, you know, you don't need both a door hanger and direct mail um, for the same location. Direct mail, there's a lot of services where you can upload your farm, upload your list. They do direct mail for you. We're recommending having the QR code as part of this. So the same video, I get this is for FISBO specifically, guys. So if you have a FISBO, the direct mail is going to, snail mail is going to take a little while, right? If they're nearby, you can just drop the door hanger that same day. How many other agents are going to be doing that for that FISBO that day? Probably not a lot, right? Probably you might even be the only one. So while they're ignoring their phone calls that are just getting blown up and their texts and their emails, this is another opportunity. So this is why we always recommend that omni-channel or multi-channel approach, because the more ways you can get in front of these people, it does all of the benefit. It, it increases your likelihood of being heard. It increases that impression that you're making, like, wow, if they're going this far above and beyond and different to earn my business, maybe they're going to actually be able to sell my home that failed to sell. 
So that's the type of impression we want to create. And so uh, for those of you that have direct mail services already, this is easy for you. You're like, all right, just I email them. Here's the address. They're going to send the direct mail out next day. They FISBO gets it a day later. Door knockers again, Vista print, like there's, if you have a local printer, lots and lots of ways to get the, the door hangers. And the difference here is we're going to be adding those custom videos, guys. If you did a custom video for the FISBO, which we should be, that's part of this whole process. You're not re-recording another one. We're just going to take the same video and put it in all of these channels. So email, text message, um, social, if you can find them, right? That's, that's a hard one. But direct mail or door knock as well. So um, these ones are a little bit more time consuming, right? Like to have the, the door hanger printed, you have to have a local printing thing or have a, a printer available to you. For direct mail, it's sort of the same thing. You have to have a service or you're gonna be go putting something in their mailbox. So that's why I save these ones. Again, they're very separate from calling where you can be fully practiced and prepared. You know, you're not on the spot but it is more time consuming and typically a little of cost associated as well with the print or the mail service. But again, the difference here is video. We're going to be setting ourselves apart. It's going to have a big QR code in the middle of the message that nobody else is going to have because less than 5% of people are doing this. And especially when it's custom. So this is just one of the three channels, guys. So we took, we got the lead, right? That's step one. Red X or uh, who who is a uh, Matt? You you recommended uh, plus leads for exactly. So I guess if there's lots of services out there, Matt. If you if you have good things to say about plus leads, I'm sure others would be interested. Um, but so you have your lead service where you get the expireds and fizbos and stuff on a daily basis, and then that is your hit list. You record your video for that specific person. Then you're going to send the email, obviously, text message, obviously. And then you're going to call as well using the script we just talked about. Then we have the direct mail or door knock option. Now, obviously, I would say this for last because if you had a conversation, the person's like, oh, we're, no, we're going to list with them. It's my mom. My mom's the agent. I'm definitely not unlisting with my mom or whatever, right? Then, okay, we lost that one. Don't bother with the mailer. Don't bother with the going knocking on their door. So it's in this specific order for that particular reason, because in terms of difficulty or time consumption, and is it even worth doing this if we just perform the other steps? So again, we sent the email, we sent the text, we called, they didn't answer, we left a voicemail. This facilitates a, a, a direct option, maybe a direct mail or door, uh, door hanger, something like that. But if the opposite happened, where we texted them, we emailed, we called, they text us back and say, no thanks, stop, stop calling me or whatever, like something, to stop the conversation, then we don't bother going through this last phase. So that specific strategy is in that order for a given reason. Um, and like, again, this one, because it's more, more time consuming um, than the others. Okay, good. Any questions guys on these three steps that we've covered so far, creating or get, acquiring the lead, custom video, and then distribution through email, phone call, physical call, and then direct mail. Is this making sense for you guys? I've, I've seen some top producers that have this stuff in place and it's like a well-oiled machine. They are not even doing half the activity. They either have a, an assistant doing most of the stuff for them. They can come in and just record the message and then everything gets sent. So once this, once this is part of your daily workflow, this is going to pay dividends, but it does require investment, right? You have to invest in your ability to call, or you're going to invest in a VA like we did the last training, and they're going to call for you. And then they've done the script training. So either way, it's, it's, a, it's a larger investment up front, but this becomes a powerful way to feed yourself on a daily basis. I have seen agents that have built their business off of expireds, off of FISBOs, and it depends on what your style is, right? Like if you're like, I have had bad conversations with expireds before and I don't have the I don't have the, I don't want to do that anymore. Everyone's different. Everyone's had personal experiences. Um and like I said, I've seen many success stories where people have built their business off of expireds and fisbos because it's a it's a daily flow. You know, you're not having to go acquire leads in other ways. Ruben. This one's Darius. Go ahead. Yeah. I I, I know it says Ruben. Sorry, it's confusing. Where do we get uh, QR code? 
Do you have any website of uh... Gub will automatically generate the QR code for you for the video. So let, let me um, share this really quick. You know, I'm gonna take over just for a second. So when you record a video on Dub, Dub is going to automatically generate a QR code. So this is what I showed you guys, how to do this, this video. If it's for Darius, Darius is the homeowner, that's what you're gonna do for him. So here's my video. And now there is my QR code that I'm gonna put on my physical mailer. And I'm gonna make sure this QR code is nice and prominent with some context. And it says, here's a personal video I made for you with a little arrow pointing to the QR code. So that way they know exactly what it is. It's large and prominent. And when they do this, it's gonna, again, create an impression that 95% of other people aren't gonna be doing for them. So there's no guarantee they didn't get a video from another agent, but there is a 95% chance that they did not. So um, did I answer your question there? Uh, Darius, you did, but then what about if we can, can we use that QR code for, let's say, uh, hangouts, uh, doorknobs or everything or, yeah. or, or mailer or anything? You got it. Now, now it will depend just one second. Sorry. It will depend on the use case. So what we're talking about today specifically is the expired. And what I would normally recommend is the custom video, because that's, what's going to create the best impression. Right, everyone else is dropping dropping voicemails or dropping pre-written text. Is they're putting copy and pasted content out there. So this is our opportunity to really distinguish ourselves, and it won't take very long. The longest part is actually getting the physical piece of mail to their house or the door not, the door hanger to their house. Yeah. So if it's for Fisbo, it's going to be like this, where it says, "Hey John, Hey Darius, Hey Bill," and you're going to take the one QR code and you're going to print that on your physical. Now, if it's for like farming, let's a different example, right? You're going to send one piece of mail to 200 to 2000 people in your farm, then it would be a generic video where you just say, hey, guys, it's Darius. And I wanted to provide you my monthly market update via direct mail. And so here's your information, right? The video is not specific to one person. OK, the video changes the content, yeah. what you're saying, but the QR code itself is going to always stay the same. Well, the QR code will be unique for each video. For each video, okay. Yeah, so like yeah. this video here, my Hey Darius has its own Hey Darius QR code. And then if I have another one that's, let's say the market update, like this one here, I, I showed them the screen and I showed them some cool market stuff. This has its own QR has, okay. code. Okay, there are different codes, okay. You got it. Because recently I was told, I spent, I spent in tune of close to $1,500 for last three months in a row sending your postcards. Mm. Not just one time. I was yeah, just yeah. bombarding them every week yeah. with the, with the postcard, but different messages. But again, my picture, my information, and then I neglected to put the QR code. And then one of the coaches said that you know what, guys, these days QR code is the best thing to do because everybody has this thing attached to their body. So Got the it. minute they receive it, they scan it, and there you go. Rather than for them to read and call and text the other thing is like what you just mentioned there um for for mailer campaigns if if, if you, you keep a close eye on it because it's just like advertisement campaigns where if you take your eye off the ball your money's decreasing and we're not watching the conversion rates so i always recommend keeping a very close eye when the dollars are going out look at that conversion rate and see how can i boost this how can i do it better like you said you, a coach said hey qrs and you're like oh man let me let me go do this now so Anytime we're doing spending extra, like email is basically free. Phone calls are basically free. It's just time, you know, opportunity cost. But mailers and advertising and things like that, those, those are costing actual dollars and time. So keep a close, close eye, guys. And whenever you're doing anything that has additional cost, like physical mailers or whatever. And then, yes, QR codes. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Good question. Um, Alexandra also said, can we send the QR via text? So, yes, you can. But I don't know if you would want to. Because um, if if they have it as a text message, they can't scan it, <laughs> you know, because if it's they're looking at it on their phone, they would need a second phone in order to scan it from their first phone. So, um, Alexandra, if you wanted to send a QR code via text message, yeah, you could just point your camera right to your QR code, take a picture and send that via text message. And then that will have effectively sent the QR code via text. Okay, good question. Um, 
I think we got what one more, a couple more slides. Ina, go ahead. You can reshare. And then we got a couple more. I just wanted to show you guys what this uh, looks like. So um, this one isn't quite right in email. What we talked about though was that personalization, right? The hey, hey, this is the right slide, but the image. Uh, this, this is what I wanted here. So in the email, in the SMS, on the physical piece of mail, this is what they're going to see. So first in the body, that's what they're going to see right away. Email and text, they get to see this without doing anything. And then on the physical mailer, once they've pointed to the QR code, that's when they're going to get to that personal video message. And again, this is going to create a much better, even if they're doing video, I can promise you they're probably not doing this because this is like the 10% of all people doing video do customization like that. So this is all about impressions. They already have a realtor. They already listed. This is about like fierce competition. We got our dukes up in the ring trying to beat out the other realtors. So how do we do that? You know, by showing that we're above and beyond what they're going to be capable of doing. That our strategies and our techniques and our marketing abilities are better than the competitions. Because ultimately that, that's why they're going to, what else can we do to show that, hey, this guy failed where I will succeed. How can we get them to think that? You know, we can speak to them or we can show them. I recommend both. You know, oh, there he is. Show them. How do, yeah. you, how do you customize these saying that, hey, John, video for John and showing it on a, on a cell phone? This one, this particular strategy is just for like FISBOs or expireds or lower volume leads. Like if you're going to do the one where it's a direct mailer to a thousand people, you wouldn't be able to customize it for 1,000 people. Um, so this one that I'm showing you is specifically for when you're dealing with one off. Like, let's say you did an open house and you met eight, six leads that weekend. That's a decent open. Each of those six people would get a video like this. And this is actually done using the Dub application. So in the Dub app, there's a little clipboard right here. I click the clipboard. And now I can type in a person's name like, hey, John. And then I'm going to turn my phone sideways. And this is how I'm going to start that thumbnail. But expireds also have a, a visual here, guys. Let me just share my screen really quick. Um, with expireds, you guys can actually show your screen as well. So you can click this little button. And then again, I know we're not looking at an expired listing, but we can pretend that we are. So I can be here and I can say, hey, John, I saw that your list, wrong way. I saw that your listing actually expired. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things that went wrong. And actually, I wanted to let you know that I specialize in bringing people's expired listings back onto the market and successfully selling them. We've done a number of times. I'd like to discuss the strategy with you and book a time with me below or call me below. That, that would be the second concept where pretend, I know that our imagination just for a moment, that instead of a Canva slide, it's their expired listing. So if you have that service like Red X or you found them in MLS, just pull up their visual of their property. They'll recognize it. It's theirs. And say, hey, I saw that your listing actually expired and I wanted to talk to you about it. So um, either the, the name, right? It's either their name in the thumbnail like that, or it's their listing that you're showing in a screen recording. Both of those will have the same impression, meaning that I did a custom video just for you and you know that it was just for you as soon as you open the message. That will increase the clicks and responses to those types of messages a lot. Make sense? Thank you. You're good, excellent, perfect. All right, uh, Alexandra, can we send the QR via text? Yes, we covered that one. And then how can we send this link SMS? So um, great question, Alexandra. What we have, by the way, guys, there's a little thing here where you can send a video via SMS and you can force the preview just like I showed you here in that slide. So right here. So this is what we want. When we send somebody a video text message, we want them to see this of us, you know, so they know that we're a person, we're a human. The video is just for them. You can see video for John. And so when you send text messages with videos, you want to make sure that they look like this. And so I will show you a little workaround to do this because th this is just super nuanced, guys. But the, the world of text messaging is changing. And, you know, six months ago, if I text message you a link, it would automatically show a preview. But now, if you have never responded to my message before, meaning it's a cold contact, 
which most of these FISBOs will be, or sorry, expireds, most of these expireds have not responded to your message before. So if I send just the link, it only shows as a link, which is not very attractive, right? We want it to show like I just showed you guys here. So in order to do that, Dub has a little workaround. So in the app, I'm gonna click on that video that's, hey, video for Darius. Here's my video. And I'm gonna click this little button right there that says, download the GIF. So I just downloaded the GIF. That's the looping image where I'm saying, hey, Darius. And now when I go to text message this, I'm gonna click just the paper airplane, click my text message option. And what that does is it opens up the message with the video, with the link, everything there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this to myself. And so that, that's how you can force that preview in there is by downloading the GIF and then attaching it. So here's my message. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna write this one step at a time. First, I go to my contact and I say, hey, Darius. It's weird talking to myself in the third person, first person. <laughs> hey, Darius. And then I'm gonna say, check out this video. And then I'm gonna click the little button to add an image. And the image I'm gonna add is the one that I just downloaded from Dub. So now you can see there's the image with the looping. It says, hey, Darius, check out this video. And then all I have to do is include the link for SMS. You see where it says copy URL for SMS. So I click there, copy URL for SMS. And so now I'm gonna paste that into the body of my message. So here's what it looks like before I send. You have the GIF preview, looping image. Hey, Darius, check out this video. Then you have the link. When I send that, that is what's gonna show up exactly like this with the thumbnail, with the link, with the message. Any other way that you're sending a video, if they've not responded, is just gonna be a link. So this does require an additional click, but it's also gonna create a far better experience for the recipient than you get from other methods, other apps, other things like that. You know, when you try to just share the link, it's just gonna be the link. And this enables you to force the preview along with it. So great question, Alexandra. Thank you for, for having us show that. Okay, um, Ina, I think we, I think we're actually, that was the last one, right? The, the SMS piece. Yeah, yeah so, that's the one. so that, that's really the magic there guys is get a source for your FISBOs and expireds, expireds is today. We'll talk about FISBOs next time. The scripts are different, stuff like that but the sources are the same. So Matt mentioned uh, one plus leads or something. Matt, do you, do you like them? Are you still here, buddy? Um, yes, it's uh, my, my plus leads. So as soon as, so what's so good too about my plus leads is, you know, if you're in a state that requires that you cannot do any solicitation between a certain time, they will not send you those leads until that certain time. Nice. So you can't get in trouble with that. So plus I have it through that high funnel, whatever. Yeah. So they automatically go out uh, as soon as literally it comes in through my plus leads, hits through oh. leads ROI, and then it goes out. So so like that, that while is a very comfortable, it's, it's the easiest method because it's automatic, right? Your leads come in, boom, you're getting something going out to them right away, which is great in terms of speed to lead, but it does lack the personalization, right? Because uh, so, it's not, they're not getting a custom message from you for each expired as they hit. So there's been well, that's not, that's not necessarily true because because you're using high funnel, you can create however your drip campaign wants to be. So if it wants to be your uh, the video, it, that that's going out. Well, what I mean is is a, a custom video, like you know, you can't say, hey, oh John, right, you're saying yeah, it's not going to that specific person that not lost yet. that expired. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And so, yep. like, there, there's definitely a cost benefit to weigh there for yourself. Like, you're like, look, this is automatic. It happens every morning. Boom, they're getting stuff for me as soon as they hit the database. And it's getting me some business. Or you can say, look, I have this many. I'm going to try a custom approach and see if my conversion rate can be better because I have bandwidth in the morning. I have some time for that. So that, but that's... I, yeah, yeah, so, but then the other one that you're saying is more um, personal is my my plus leads 
postcards or emails regarding people in probate through the probate clerk. Yeah, office. there you go. So probate's another one too. There, there's, there's, yeah, divorce people. There's all kinds of cool stuff to, to go after. But these yeah. are the hey, problems. Matt, Matt, real quick, uh, this is Smarty. I just signed up for my plus leads. You know, if it, the, you said that it, it, it automatically sends over to high level. Does my plus leads have a zap? Well, okay, so yeah, they do zap here. Yeah. They do Zapier, good. And then how about uh, Darius? Uh, uh, I'm sure does Dub have his app, so I can if I zap him in the in the Dub and then send out a, a personal uh, video. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So it, it would be Dub or you know whatever comes into there goes into. If you're using high level, then you could also just add Dub videos into high level messages and sequences and stuff like that. So you go into high level, create a template, add the video there, and then that's what gets triggered as soon as. You know, uh, one plus goes to high level, triggers the automation that's ready to go. So again, th this is definitely the easier of the methods, right? Because it's automatic, and that that's a dream for a lot of us. The better, more, more we can automate stuff, the better. But every once in a while, I will recommend doing some like if you have the bandwidth, if you have the time, custom is going to have a better conversion rate, um, especially if you're just getting started with it. We want to create that impression, do something different. Um, but that also creates a great impression, like what what Matt's doing. Because it's instant, like man, my ex listing just went expired today, and I already got a message in front of me from from this guy. So that creates its own sort of impression. Versus, okay, the five realtor things that I got were from automation, and then one guy's comes later in the day, and it's different, but it's custom. You know, it's, it's hard to say which one's going to create the best impression for for that world. So, and then I also got a new selfie stick. And what I do is I'll put the better picture, the camera, which is obviously this yeah, one, yeah. so I can actually see on this side what I'm oh, looking at. Oh, that's killer. It's got the mirror built into it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I have a mirror right here that I set up for those purposes when I'm doing, I'm like, okay, I need the front camera. The back camera is a lot better. Let me turn this guy on, but then I need to set the mirror up in front of it so you can see yourself. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll go to Amazon and get that too. There you go. There you but go. I, I just yeah. used super glue and stuck it on my selfie stick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you serious, or was that a super? That that's an awesome looking super glue job, there, buddy. <laughs> Killer. Okay, here, uh, Rich. Um, will there be a short video on the SMS workaround? Um, I did just paste it in there. Yeah, sorry. Did I I I pasted it? But I, I didn't... put it in there too, Darius. I put it in there too. That's the GIF video, right, Rob? The one that shows yes. how to post SMS. GIF. SMS. Yep. Good. So yes, Rich, thanks for the question. And yeah, I put the link in there. That's a video that shows you how to force the preview. Um, Rick, what about the copy link thumbnail for the dashboard via SMS? Are you talking, Rick uh, Blinn, are you still here? And are you talking about sending SMS from desktop? Your microphone, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm trying to send, I have a desktop app. I send a lot of text okay. in there. Yeah, so the the just the URL would be a uh, satisfaction for for that piece. So when you're in Dub, you can click right on the extension. Your videos are here, and you can just copy the uh, URL like this. Right. That's good. Okay. For, yeah, you don't need the extra text in the thumbnail and stuff, um, but you okay. will force the preview. So, like, let's say for example, Google Voice is a desktop-based text message application. Right. In here. I would still have to force the preview separately. So when I go to write my message, I'm going to, um, oh my geez, I'm trying to like remove my personal contacts from here. It's not working. Anyway, there's a button there to add um, your images. So you would add the image first, then you would copy the URL and the message into that. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. Let's hear uh, what else. I think that's everything. Okay. Jeffrey. Is there a way to make the image show an email on an iPhone? I'm having the issue with my family members. iPhone 13 just shows a box with the blue link. So I think that's going to be a default uh, setting on your email. Is that a Gmail or Outlook, uh, Jeffrey? Uh, S SMTP. No, so I mean, the inbox that you're viewing the video from, is that a Gmail or an Outlook or something else? Uh, it would be, it would be Apple's mail browser. I see. Okay. So then you're using the Apple mail to view. And then what, what is your primary email? Is it, is it something, is it Mac mail or Apple mail, or is it a Gmail or an outlook or something else? It's a private domain posted at SiteGround. Okay. SiteGround. 
So then, yeah, that actually might be a setting of either site ground or something else. Um, because dub videos, actually, you know what here? Um, okay, so yeah, that's a, that's a setting on Apple Mail where it's not allowing the images to load. You can see here, actually, I'll show you my same thing. And I know that it's not, uh, that it's just blocking dub stuff specifically, like certain images, and I'll show you what I mean. So like right here is a email that I've opened on my Apple Mail, and you can see it's even blocking something in my signature. So that that's separate from dub, and it's still putting that little weird question mark in my signature. So I, I'm believing that's a setting just within the Apple Mail settings to not display all images by default. Yeah, I'm ba basically, I'm sending the email from Chime. Okay, yeah. So I'm just doing testing now, but that's... If you, if you view that same email from any other inbox, other than the Apple Mail on your iPhone, I'm, I'm sure the images will be displayed automatically by default. I, I'm pretty sure that's just... Because like this same email that I'm viewing right now, it's blocking an image in my signature, but every other inbox I view that and it's not blocked. So I, I think that's just a setting on, on Apple Mail. Okay. Is there, I mean, is there any workaround or anything you can do or what? There's nothing we can do from our end as the sender. Okay. If the recipient decides to turn off images by default or their setting is that way, there's nothing we can do from a sending standpoint. The recipient themselves would have to update their settings to display images. Okay. So in the, in an email that you're sending a dub video, would you just put more information in it would be the best practice? Like more um, no, I, okay, so it's like the, the vast majority of people are on Gmails and Outlooks, so it's a very small percentage of people that are going to be opening the native Apple Mail client thing, I think, less than 25% of people, so that 75% of people that use Gmails and Outlooks, they will have the image displayed regularly. It'll look exactly like it is supposed to on all other platforms. Um, those people that have their Apple Mail settings that they've not configured, it's just going to shut off certain images that don't show for some reason. Um, I'm not that, and there's again, yeah, there's nothing we could do about it from a sending perspective. Privacy setting, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I just was trying to figure out what else you could put in a drip email or that that you know would get them to click on the link, or am I better off, you know, or right, right? No, you always want that line of text in the body of the email every single time you need a line there. And what I recommend having that line say is something that's going to get them to watch the video. So you'd say, hey, check out this video about X, where X is something interesting for them, right? How to save money on your next home purchase, how to get more to sell your home or how to, you know, get the most value out of your home or, or whatever, something like that, something that's interesting for the recipient. That's going to get them to want to click on the link or the fallback or one of those options. Okay. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't be overly concerned that it that as long as I have some text to say. What yes, and, and yeah, and, and everyone here should know you always need at least one line of text along with the video because I'll, I'll show you what I mean here visually. Um, if I go to send this email with just that, that's definitely going to spam most of the time because nobody sends video, no, nobody sends emails like that, right? I would say something like, hey, John, here, here's my headshot. I'd provide some context or something. So because the email service providers are constantly viewing everything that's being sent, if it looks funky, they're probably going to send it to spam. And so whether it's a still image or a video or something else without any context, likely not going to their inbox. So always need at least one sentence. Hey, John, check out this thing. And that one sentence, uh, I don't recommend putting multiple paragraphs or like a long, don't explain every single thing that's in the video because then they're less incentivized to click play. Do include just a single sentence that sort of teases them and lets them know, here's what's in the video. Click play. All right, thank you. Got it. All right, any anything else here while we can answer for I you will, guys? I will say I also use Mailbox Power for my postcards, right? There you go. Okay, Mailbox. Yeah. Do you have a, a referral link, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> Share that, man. Share it. Say yeah. here, I like these guys for direct mail. I like these guys for, yeah, man, share the referral link, share the love. Okay, and then uh, what's so neat about that too is now that they have in, they have created uh, Google Street View. So if you're going with, uh, you know, a FISBO or an expired that you've never seen, they're going to go grab that 
a uh, picture of that house and put it on the postcard. So when you yeah. open up the mail and you see your actual house uh, on the postcard, you'll be more likely to look at it. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, that. I love that, Matt. I, I use uh, Thanks.io does the same thing. I've been using Thanks.io, similar to my mailbox or whatever. Nice. Um, it, it really, the open rates are phenomenal because they see the picture of their house. They're like, what is nice. this? That's Go it. through all the other cards. Same thing I just said, you guys there. Exactly. That, that strategy of this is for me, it makes it far more interesting for them to want to look at. So. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, I'm not trying to add the ability to put a QR code in and when someone scans it, lets you know who scanned it. Yeah, no, that would be really cool. That's that, the only way to do that right now would be to have custom UR co QR codes for each person. The other way. Yeah, to oh, no, Mailbox does. No, Mailbox does. No, Mailbox no, does. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so they uh, have no, thanks power. IO does. Yeah, it's, thanks IO does too. Thanks IO. You yeah. know, it'll, I'll tell you exactly what address scan it's, that it's that QR unique, code. Yeah, it's a unique QR code for yeah. each person. So that's how you're able to. Yeah. So you're not able to put one QR code that can do that. Um, there is the option where if you put the QR code, you can have like a form or something after that, and then that way you'd be able to identify. Like if you put a QR code on a bench, a you know park bench ad or a bus stop ad. That one can't be tracked unless you have a form or something after the fact. So that's because it's the same code. I mean, you could put a different code on each bench and you'd know which one they scanned. But again, it, that, that's the only way to do that. So Good. All right. Well, that next week, I'll just show you, you know, LPT, yeah. I totally stands for listing power tools. Yeah. Right. So uh, Palmer decided to name it, you know, his real estate company after that, since he's a mortgage company guy anyway. Yeah. Anyway, listing power tools have been around for, I guess, seven years for real estate agents or mortgage brokers or whoever. So that's the video that I want to create opening yeah. up the 168 page or 168 item thing that's just dedicated for that one house when right. we list your property. With flyers, door knockers, thank you cards, open house things, business cards with everybody's picture on that particular thing. And I'll show you that next week when we do FISBOs. Because yeah. that's the thing that I would be sending to FISBOs. Yeah. You know, you have, you're selling a million dollar house. And I've lately, I don't know about y'all, but I lately have been getting a lot of FISBOs. And these people have like maybe one or two picture on a freaking million dollar house. And I'm thinking to myself, what the F are y'all thinking about? They're not agents. I mean, first of all, why aren't you even having a brokers open before you even put the house on the market? <laughs> we didn't know any better. Yeah, it's our time to educate them. So, all right, guys. Well, appreciate you here today. Um, we're going to be having a couple other valuable lessons here back to back every week. Feel free to, in, to invite some friends. Uh, Matt, John, appreciate you guys contributing as well. If you know that that's what this, we want this to be a community. People can learn from each other. You know, we're all uh, experts in different things. And so learn learn from those that have done and succeeded. So you need to bring your man, Kelly Wheeler, in here a few times. Yeah, yeah. I, I spoke to Kelly. I, I spoke to Kelly the other day. He's awesome. That, yeah. He has great strategies and he's really good. And he loves mailbox power too. So, yeah. Well, he's yeah. the one that got, I mean, I'm under him at LPT. So we have yeah. private meetings tomorrow at 1130. And then our, his group's meetings at, after that. It. His energy is wonderful. He's got really good, uh, really good strategies, very clear cut steps. So, yeah. yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, we're going to cut today, awesome. guys. Appreciate you as always. Um, if any questions, comments, concerns, just come, you know, your little green button on the website. We're just a few minutes away. So, I'm Darius, I'll catch you on the top of the hour. I'm next, right? All right. Right. See you guys. Do you want to stay on this or do you have a different? We'll, be in, we'll be in another. We'll be in another. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right, All right guys.